You know, I just want to see a poster for this movie that tells the absolute truth. It just says in big words, from the director of Max Payne. A Good Day to Die Hard or Die Hard 5 is directed by John Moore, stars Bruce Willis and Jai Courtney. I am a huge fan of Die Hard. I like every single one of them. Yes, hardcore fans, even four. So if anyone was excited for this movie, it was me. I love these movies. I've watched them countless times. I think they're so much fun. They're some of the best action movies ever made. They all contain great stunt work. One and three in particular are my favorites. Die Hard with a Vengeance I find extremely underrated. I love Die Hard, big fan. In this movie, John McClane is in Russia because his son has gotten into trouble. His son is a spy who's trying to protect this political prisoner of sorts. At the same time, there's an entire terrorist plot going on behind the scenes that both of them aren't entirely sure about yet. And once father and son clash together, lots of explosions and car crashes happen, and we have a Die Hard movie. Now, I was excited for this movie purely because it is a Die Hard film, and I really wanted this movie to be good. But I was concerned about the director, though, because he made Behind Enemy Lines with Owen Wilson and Gene Hackman. While at times an entertaining movie, probably one of the most unrealistic war movies I've ever seen. And he also made the cinematic disaster Max Payne, which was just sad. So going into Die Hard 5, I was optimistic. Walking out of Die Hard 5, I was crying. This movie sucks. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry to tell you this. If anyone was supposed to like this movie, it was me. I loved all of the other Die Hard movies. I really was sitting there during this movie just in pain. Every single person I talked to after the movie felt the exact same way. Now hear me out, because I know I just disappointed you and I want to apologize because I'm a fan like you guys. I'm a fan of this series and I really wanted this movie to be good. But honestly, nothing leading up to it made me think it was going to be. There's all these really over the top CGI shots in the trailer, which by the way, gives away all of the big moments in this movie. If you saw the trailer, you saw all the big moments. That's for sure. See, there are certain things that a Die Hard movie needs, and a Die Hard fan of Die Hard requires these certain things to be there, which is why some people were disappointed with Die Hard 4, because it didn't have as much of the F words or the cussing or anything, or like really bloody violence, even though there was a substantial amount of action in that movie. People were excited about this movie because the rated R rating is back. That means more F words, more blood. I gotta be honest with you, 100%. Except for a couple well-timed headshots with some blood, Die Hard 4 is more violent than this movie. No joke, except for a couple bloody moments. That's it. And I know you want to know, is the catchphrase in there? Is it complete? Yes, it's in there. That doesn't mean it's a good movie. How many times does he say the F word? I'd say about five or six times. Yeah. So if you're really excited for this big R movie, there's really nothing about it that screams rated R. Now, as I said, there are things that a fan requires to be in the Die Hard movies. Number one, John McClane-isms. That means he's a foul-mouthed guy who jokes when he should be worried for his life. He says stuff, he laughs, you like him, you dig the guy, you want him to survive. Do we have that in this movie? To an extent. The character of John McClane is not completely raped as the Die Hard franchise is with this film. The character remains intact, he's there, he pops a few one-liners, He's entertaining, he's a likable guy. You get that. Okay. Number two on the list of things required is a great villain. Hans Gruber from Die Hard. Fantastic villain. You got to see him and John McClane go back and forth with great dialogue. Terrific performance by Alan Rickman. Die Hard 3 with Jeremy Irons. Another great villain. And you know, I gotta be honest, Timothy Oliphant in Die Hard 4, I thought he did a great job in that movie. I like him as an actor. And he was an interesting villain for John McClane because he was a digital villain where we have an analog hero. They had a reason to not like each other besides, oh, he has a gun and I have a gun, I don't like him. There was actually a reason for these people to clash. The villain in Die Hard 2 was fine. He wasn't remarkable, but he was okay. It was a passable villain. He did his job well for what he needed to be. The villain in this movie is freaking terrible. He is just from normal movie standards, he's an awful villain. From Die Hard standards, he's like a freaking little ant. Nothing about the villain in this movie is good. In fact, I can't spoil anything about this movie, but there are multiple villains, I'll just put it that way. And none of them are good. They're not interesting, you don't understand even what their motivation is. And to be honest, the entire plot behind these villains' idea for what they want to do does not make any sense. It's convoluted to all hell, and it is just completely jumbled. As someone said to me, Chris, explain the plot of Die Hard 1. I would say some terrorists take over Nakatomi Plaza because they want the money inside it, and John McClane has to stop them. If someone said, explain the plot of Die Hard 2. I would say some terrorists take over an airport, 
and John McClane has to stop them. If someone said explain the plot of Die Hard 3, I would say there's some terrorists after some gold and John McClane has to stop them and Samuel L. Jackson is awesome. If someone said explain the plot of Die Hard 4, I would say there's some techno terrorist after some money and John McClane has to stop them. If someone told me to explain the plot of this movie, I'm going to actually try to do it right now. There, there's a bad guy, but he's a political prisoner. John McClane's son is a spy who's trying to protect him. And John McClane then has to go to Russia because his son gets in trouble. And then some stuff happens. And his daughter is there. And then it, it gets weird. And then there's a helicopter and some uranium and I don't know. Look, I'm not even acting right now. The plot for this movie is absolute crap. None of it makes sense, and I don't even understand it. I don't understand the Die Hard plot. What world do I live in right now? Another thing that is required in a Die Hard movie is non-stop tension. Not non-stop action. Non-stop tension. Because remember, what are some of the best parts of the first few Die Hard films? The dialogue, the tension between characters, it's fun to see John McClane shoot stuff up and jump off a building when it explodes and everything. That's awesome if it's directed well by good old John McTiernan who made one and three or Len Wiseman who made the fourth one. Great looking movie. Really great stunt work in that movie. Seriously great stunt work in Die Hard 4. So John McClane jumps on a plane and jumps off the jet and then it explodes. Big deal. I buy that possibly in some world that might happen. In the first one he jumps off a building while connected to a fire hose then crashes through a window. There's over the top stuff in all of these movies but the reason you buy them is because the way they're made, because the characters feel like humans, they feel like real people, so you buy when they go through these situations. You're like, yes, please live, please live, because you care about them. The way the film's made, the way it looks, and the way it's written, it makes sense and so you buy the more over-the-top elements. But that non-stop tension in which the hero is constantly in trouble is always present in the first four movies. This movie has none of that. Do cars fly everywhere? Do explosions happen? Does John McClane shoot some people? Yes, that happens. But it is like a video game. That's all it is. There's this big action chase scene where they boasted, oh, it took us like three months to film this scene. It's because basically a tank-like truck just plows through a whole bunch of cars and they fly everywhere. And John McClane follows him and goes, ha ha! <laughs> That's the scene. I'm not even kidding, okay? Yeah, some cars fly everywhere, but it looks like a Michael Bay movie, guys. It looks like a Michael Bay movie. The action in this movie is tensionless. If people were upset about John McClane looking too much like a superhero in the fourth film, they are going to blow their stack when you see this movie. His freaking truck flips like 10 times and he literally just gets out and starts jogging without a scratch. Nothing, no blood, nothing. And he starts running. The CGI in this movie, if anyone complained about Max Payne, the director took absolutely none of that advice. There's all this over-the-top CGI with John McClane flying through windows in slow motion and Matrix-style action. This is one of the most disappointing movies I have ever seen in my life, and I'm truly sorry to tell you guys that not only is this not Die Hard, it just sucks. The only thing that even closely resembles a previous Die Hard film is the character of John McClane, which remains somewhat intact. And I gotta say, the guy who plays his son, Jai Courtney, he's not irritating, he's not a terrible sidekick, and he did a good job for what he had to do. And I liked their camaraderie, and there were moments in this movie where I could be like, man, this could be a good movie. These characters are cool. This could be good. But it's not. The plot makes no sense. Terrible villain. Fake as all hell action, no tension, and it's short. It's like 90 minutes long, this movie. What? All the Die Hard movies are over two hours. It's like John Moore sat down and went, how do I piss off Die Hard fans? I'll make a Die Hard movie and do everything wrong. I'm gonna give A Good Day to Die Hard a D plus. I'm so sorry, guys. It's just, ugh. Oh. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'm interested in seeing what you think of the movie once you see it. As always, guys, if you like this review, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.